this episode of In The Loop, physical therapy technology used for concussions could be a game changer for people dealing with long COVID. We'll show you how. And we're getting people about 60 to 70% better within about a six week time frame on average. Plus, the U.S. government reached its debt ceiling just last week, setting off discussions around how to deal with this debt crisis. Our friends at The Washington Post are going to tap in to tell us why the debt ceiling is so high and why Congress is arguing about it again. This is In The Loop. I'm Christian Bryant. We'll get to those stories in a few, but first, we're tackling an issue that's a little more personal. Your trust in me. Well, not just me, but news media as a whole. As a part of National News Literacy Week, we'll explore how the public's perception of and attentiveness to news depends on what's happening in our country and why, right now, trust in American media appears to be at a historic low. The numbers are shameful, y'all. Recent polling from Gallup shows only 34% of Americans seem to trust the news. Just 7% of those Americans have a great deal of trust and confidence in the media, while 27% would say they trust news a fair amount. 28% of U.S. adults say they do not have much confidence in newspapers, TV, and radio, and 38% have no confidence at all. These numbers can be worse depending on the survey or poll, but they all underscore one thing. Americans say they don't trust news media right now. The public has been very, very ambivalent about the media for a very long time. So disenchantment that is showing up in polls now is not anything new. That's Ed Wasserman, a professor at and former dean of the Graduate School of Journalism at UC Berkeley. Wasserman spoke with Scripps News about why Americans have such low trust in the media. And according to him, a lot of it can be traced back to political attacks against media coverage going back decades. Let's take the Vietnam War as an example. Well, this has been a favorite issue uh, among uh, conservative politicians going back to the late 1960s. And at that time, it was about, uh, the, the media were thought to be um, insufficiently patriotic with respect to the war in Vietnam and divisive and perhaps unduly supportive of cultural movements and of cultural uh, disaffection. And for those reasons, it worked. Then came the Watergate scandal in the early 1970s. While that exposed the need for the media as a check on government power, there was still a lot of public cynicism, especially among conservatives. Since then, uh, the media, uh, the, the identity of the media as being a kind of intractably liberal, uh, progressive uh, force uh, has taken root and been used effectively by politicians on the right. The irony is that for many, many years before then, the media had been seen as a very conservative force. And certainly during the Roosevelt administrations, the media were seen as anti-New Deal. Uh, the, the newspapers were seen as real implacable opponents of Roosevelt. So it's funny the way that has turned around uh, historically in political terms. While those events sort of established a political divide, today covering politics is more prominent than ever. Research shows that when it comes to getting news about politics and government, Liberals and conservatives live in very different worlds with very little, if any, overlap in their primary news sources. And that can significantly impact their views. In a stark example of this, an experiment that involved making regular Fox News watchers watch CNN instead for a month found that it moderated a lot of the viewers' more extreme views. The study concluded that, quote, partisan media viewers' attitudes appear more malleable than some suggest, and that a partisan consumption of news sustains polarization. I think I have an easier time um, in Africa or the Middle East than I do in the United States. Nina Alvarez, the director of global journalism at Columbia Journalism School, finds that partisan media attacks can make reporting incredibly difficult, especially in more polarized areas like Middle America. Those reporting difficulties can exacerbate divides and mistrust already compounded by other factors like a rapid decline in local news or digital media's problem of misinformation. I think that media literacy is also something that has been lacking in our education. And so that also has an impact because consumers aren't really equipped to tell the difference between what's journalism that is living up to journalism standards of fact-based accuracy um, that other uh, organizations aren't, aren't uh, upholding. 
So how can news audiences know which organizations to trust? How are they sourcing the information? How forthright are they in identifying the sources? And if the sources of the information are being clearly identified and you find those sources of information to be credible and believable, then that, that report tends to deserve your attention. Experts like Wasserman say it's also important to consider why certain topics receive news coverage and others don't get the same attention. So are they playing out an agenda, a political agenda, uh, in the way in which they're uh, composing their news agenda, or are they actually directing my attention to things that I ought to be worried about and ought to be thinking about and ought to be acting on? Considering motive and sources and consuming diverse and credible media is all important for news audiences, but improving diversity within news organizations is equally important, something some news outlets are at least trying to work on. Diverse newsrooms help cover communities of color accurately and respectfully, leading to improved trust. And I think that that actually has helped build some trust in communities that traditionally didn't trust the media because of the way they were constantly portrayed. Um, and I think that's been an important advance. And I hope that it contributes to expanding trust among, among people in the United States, especially. To learn more about what plays into trust in the media, we decided to look at a country that seems to be doing it right. Finland, for example, reports extremely high levels of news trust among its public, the highest in the world. National correspondent Ben Shimiso tells us why. Trust in the police, 85%. Trust in news media, nearly 70%. Government approval, over 60%. Welcome to Finland, where polarization is just not a part of life. At a time when trust in institutions is declining globally, Finland is a striking outlier, especially for journalism. In a Reuters Institute survey of 46 countries, no one trusts the news as much as the Finns. We live in a globalized world. Misinformation is rampant. Um, how is Finland able to not be affected by all these trends. Honesty and trust are highly valued in, in Finland. Essa Reunanen, a media researcher in Finland, says when it comes to politics, mudslinging is generally frowned upon. It's all about coalitions and compromises. Before elections, they don't know who their partners may be. So, so they are not so hostile towards each other. Less hostility in government translates to less shouting on the news. Reunanen says the standard bearer of quality journalism in Finland has long been public broadcaster YLE News. Even people of my age has watched YLE News all, all of my life. People in most northern and western European nations rank public broadcasters like YLE as the most trustworthy of all the journalism brands. This is one of the biggest political moments for years. It's a similar story for the BBC, where some of the most famous journalists in Europe work. They have a reputation for impartiality. But in America... Joe Biden is demented. And he's dangerous. The three most recognized television journalists are Tucker Carlson, Rachel Maddow and Sean Hannity, hosts of opinion shows. Only one in four Americans say they trust the news, dead last in that Reuters survey. So how we feel about news often comes down to how we feel about government and how well it's functioning. Benjamin Toff of the Reuters Institute has been traveling across the U.S. to understand why a growing share of Americans distrust the news. He says a minority is hostile, but a larger share has simply disengaged. They have the sense that there are so many media choices out there. They're sort of throwing their hands up and saying, I, I don't think I can trust any of it. But, you know, I think there's room in there to persuade people that there is value to what journalists are doing, or at least some journalists are doing. And, and uh, opportunity there to rebuild some of that trust. Ben Chamiso, Scripps News, Chicago. All right, many thanks for that reporting, Benny. Last August, we saw how the Finnish aren't completely immune to political controversies when leaked footage of 36-year-old Finnish PM Sanna Marin dancing at a party created a firestorm 
and left to the opposition party demanding she take a drug test. That test came back negative, and the people of Finland just moved on. Doesn't that sound nice? Anyway, folks, that's all from us on Trust in News for now, but Scripps News will be covering that and other media literacy issues all this week, including on The Why, which comes up right after this show. So we'll put a pin in it until then. Up next on ITL, we've got the latest COVID news, including new ways to test for its spread on airplanes and some treatment options for long COVID. That's right after this quick break, so see you in a few. (laughs) 